This is a movie about Richard's Ligustrum Eradication Program. I'm going to take you on a tour of this massive project so you can see for yourself the efforts I've gone to to save my oak trees, which are dying in droves here during this exceptional drought we're in. This is June 10th, 2011. We'll start here. I'll take you on a tour of phase one of the project. So let's go through. Hello, Mr. De or Mrs. Deer. How are you today? How are you today? You like to eat legustrums, don't you? Oh, you're a Mr. Deer. Okay, bye. Alrighty. So we'll go back here to where phase one began. And let me just shorten my monopod a little bit. Pay no attention to that. Okay. Back here, you may not see any ligustrums along this fence line. That's because several years ago, my neighbor, Mr. Tumlinson, who lives right in that house back there, came up to me, or he gave me a call on the phone. Oh, I wanted to show you his shack here. This is the violates the city setback rules. But he won't move it. He claims there's skunks living underneath it. Regardless, there's his junk pile. But this fence line here had ligustrums all along it. And you can see, here's one of the stumps I couldn't get out right there. But um, he calls me up on the phone and he goes, Richard? I want you to cut those trees down. And I said, w which ones are those, Lee? And he goes, well, all of them. <laughs> I thought he was kidding, but later I come to find out he wanted the ligustrums back by his landscape bed back here cut down because he said they were shading the plants and they weren't growing properly. Now, I lived in Texas quite a while here in San Antonio and what I've noticed is that the grass and stuff, it grows mainly in the shade, not in the, uh, in the direct sun. That's where everything dies during the summer. But regardless, being the good neighbor that I am, those ligustrums were removed. Then the drought of 2009 hit and I noticed my trees were under extreme drought stress then but I didn't connect that to the ligustrums in any way. Unfortunately all the trees growing back by my back fence here have died off and here's here's an oak tree that died this whole clump of oak trees right here right in front of you is either dead or dying and these are right next to where the big ligustrums were in addition this mod of oak trees here, while most of them are still alive, this one's dead. These are all under extreme drought stress and you can see they have the hypoxylon canker on the trunk and as you can see those places where the bark's missing on the trunk. That's hypoxylon canker. 
So anyway, I started cutting down all these ligustrums. Now this one here, I left because it's, it's holding up my fence right here that keeps the dogs in the yard. But the rest of them have had to go. These I cut out a while back. I've left the limbs I cut them off well above ground so that I'd have a lever arm to yank the stump out with when the stump has finally rotted to the point where I can remove it. So you can see these have been cut out. I'm gonna get around where the sun's at my back here so we can see a little better. But you know, here's one of the many ligustrums I've chopped down. A lot of them fell into my neighbor's backyard there, and he was kind enough to throw them back over the fence for me so I didn't have to drive around to that other street to get them out. So this is only a few of them because I've already hauled off some big piles of them to the uh, front of the yard for the brush pickup. Actually this one I still haven't cut out yet. I'm going to get that one today. Today I hope to... Whoops. Today I hope to finish chainsawing all of them. Now let's come back here. Because I want y'all to see these. Okay, see the deer have all, that deer's already found the ligustrum and he's eating the leaves. They love to eat the ligustrum leaves. So this is going to be a nice feast for the deer during this, the middle of this drought here. So let me get back around. I should have started on the east end and work my way west. Bye, Mr. Deer. But I wanted to show you some of the oak tree die off, the live oak die off. This one's nearly dead. You can see those branches have died. This small live oak is, it's still hanging on. There's some green there at the very top. But it's dead. This oak here is completely dead. Yeah, it's completely dead. There's a hackberry We're walking past. This oak is dead. And this little oak growing off to the side is dead here. There's some ligustrum I just cut down. That little oak tree is dead. Now this one still has a little green on it, so it's managed to survive. And this is one of the last two ligustrums here that I need to cut down and I'll get get that today. 
My parents planted these ligustrums back in probably the 60s. And they used to keep them trimmed to the height of the fence. But once I moved into the house, I quit trimming them and I just let them grow into tall trees. And this one, I would estimate, is... Maybe 30 feet tall at the top, maybe even more. It goes way up there. They're kind of the, there's the oak in the foreground, and the ligustrum is actually taller than this oak here. So it's a tall, tall ligustrum. And as I said, that's, there's only Two more I have to cut out. Here's one I cut. You can see it's leaning over. It's The top of it has gotten tangled in with the oak there. And so it hasn't fallen to the ground yet. And, but um, you can see it's been cut off, hopefully. And then this big, right in front of me here, almost all the oaks in this mott here are dead. Well, actually some of them are clinging to life. And I'm hoping, hoping, I doubt it, because they have hypoxalon canker on most of them, but I hope that maybe the removal of these ligustrums is going to enable the oaks to survive. I've also been watering around the base of them with drip irrigation with a soaker hose, but I don't know if it's providing enough water for them to really do any good. See, that, that oak's dead right there, the one jutting off to the right. And here's, I'll back up here so you can see some of the ligustrum piles that I made just in the last hour here. But, unfortunately, I didn't water these trees, and I did not, and I let, let these ligustrums grow wild, and I think that that's what's causing them to die off. See, that one just has a few tiny leaves up in the top. That one's completely dead. That's too bad. That was a nice oak there. Probably has, I'd say that one's a 12 inch DBH or even larger. A lot of these are t like, this is about a 12 inch DBH or 12 to 14 inches, I'd say. Maybe larger, maybe 16. I'd have to put a tape measure on them to see. And so. Just look along the fence here. And you can see what what's been removed this morning. And that's my ligustrum eradication program. Oh, one more stop on the tour. Let's come over here. Come over to 
Alex and Olga's property. Because I want to show you that how invasive these ligustrums have become. This giant ligustrum right here This one is huge, and that was not planted there. That's a ligustrum that spread probably from those ligustrums my parents planted into this natural area where the oaks are. See, this was an area that was never maintained by the man who built this house and lived here for 40 or 50 years, Mr. Haddock. But look at the size of this ligustrum here. That thing is huge. And there's more in this area here. As you'll see, Oh, this is my cedar elm, a, a huge limb spalled off of this a couple years ago. Okay. All these in here, that's a ligustrum. That's a ligustrum. That tree behind it is a ligustrum. I don't know if you can see it there. So this all through this area, right there, the ligustrums have taken hold. And there's even more. Back up this way, I'm gonna There's my cedar elm where the giant limb spalled off of it. These oaks are surviving. Now this is what's amazing. I want to show you all something. Okay. Now these ligustrums here Again, that's a ligustrum. This is a ligustrum, but I want to show you something. Let me get the camera a little lower. About four years ago, I took a chainsaw and I completely girdled this tree to a depth of about an inch and a half. This is a ligustrum, to, so it would die. Well, it didn't die. The thing kept living, even though I'd completely encircled the trunk. With this chainsaw cut to a depth of an inch and a half. But see, this is ligustrum here. This is ligustrum. Here you can see better from this side. This whole area here is being taken over by ligustrum that were not planted here. These are all
trees that established themselves here from the seeds that probably came from the legustrums my parents planted. And that concludes our tour.